Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. We're going to review a new controller here. This is called the 8-Bit Doe Ultimate Wired Controller for Xbox. And this came out a couple weeks ago and it retails for $45. And it seems to have a good amount of features that have been present in a lot of the more recent 8-Bit Doe controllers. Things like back paddle buttons, customizable software, as well as vibrating trigger buttons. And I also love that it came in this white color here, so I'm kind of excited to check it out. I'm a big fan of the 8-bit Doe controllers, especially the ones that are wired. It just makes things really easy to jump into your games. Now this controller is made specifically for your Xbox as well as your Windows PC. So it's not going to be able to work with a Nintendo Switch or a PlayStation console. Now one of the things I like about their wired controllers is that they do have breakaway cables. Now I'm not a violent gamer by any means, but it's good to know that you're not going to pull out your console in the heat of the moment. So I think most people are interested in probably how this controller feels, so that's what I want to focus on for the majority of this video. The overall design looks nice and clean, and it has a matte finish to the plastic here. It feels good in the hands. And on the back you can see it does have those two programmable back buttons as well. Overall, I'm a fan of the design. It, it actually reminds me a lot of the Xbox Series S controller. But of course, the most important thing for me is how it's going to feel in the hands and whether or not it's worth using. So let's check that out next. We'll start with the face buttons. Now these face buttons are very unique. I've actually never felt some that are quite like it. Even though the controller looks like it's made for the Xbox, these are more flat than I was expecting. They're somewhere between a PlayStation and an Xbox button. All of these center buttons have a rubber membrane feel to them, and in addition to the regular Xbox buttons, you have a couple extras. For example, the one on the bottom is a profile button to switch between profiles, and the star button here in the very center allows you to swap out buttons if you want, so A and B and X and Y, things like that. And then the center Xbox button has a nice feel to it as well. It feels a lot like a true Microsoft controller. The analog sticks on this feel very reminiscent of an Xbox controller. They are nice and springy. Now the D-pad is a classic 8-bit Do D-pad. This actually reminds me a lot of the original Super Nintendo. It's even a little bit loose in the shell, which is very authentic to me. The D-pad is also recessed in the center. You can see it's kind of in this little indentation. And that makes it using it for diagonals very simple and handy. The amount of travel and pivot on this D-pad is also very decent. So I think if you prefer to have a retro style D-pad with your modern gaming controller, this is going to be a good match. It's a very different experience from the clicky ones that you can find on the OEM controllers. While we're on the bottom, you can see there's a headphone jack as well as a mute toggle for your microphone. Now the two mappable buttons on the back are actually a little bit clicky, but they feel pretty good and I don't like having a lot of travel on those back buttons anyway, so I actually enjoy this. I feel like by having clicky and non-traveling buttons on the back, that means you're not going to press them accidentally. Now the texture along the back is ribbed, as you can see here, but it's more of a hard plastic ribbing than it is like on the Xbox Series S controller. In fact, I don't like this as much as I do on the Xbox One. Now the shoulder buttons up top are also clicky like the back buttons, but they have a lot more travel to them. And honestly, I think this might be a little bit more travel than I would like. It's still not a bad button, but I wish it was a little bit easier to press down on. I don't think I need that much travel on my shoulder buttons. And finally, on the back here, we have some analog triggers. Now, surprisingly, even though this is an Xbox controller, these triggers remind me more of a PS4 controller. And I don't think that's a bad thing. It actually feels very light and easy on the fingers to press down on them. So overall, actually, I think the control scheme works really well. But let's do some comparisons against other controllers. First, we're going to look at the Pro 2 controller, also made by 8-Bit Doe. This one came out maybe six months ago, and I really enjoy using this one too. Now, this one is much more PlayStation-like. As you can see, the face buttons are very flat, and the analog setup is more like a PS4 controller. As far as D-pads go, they're just about the same. It has those same PS4-style analog triggers, but the shoulder buttons themselves are skinnier and longer and have less travel to them. I think I like these better. And the back buttons are exactly the same. For me, this is a controller that is more retro game friendly. Because the D-pad is front and foremost when it comes to the control scheme, I find that I prefer using this when I'm emulating games on my Xbox. So I think it does serve a different purpose from the ultimate controller that we're looking at here today. By contrast, this is more analog control friendly, so it's more suited for modern games. And the overall ergonomics and grip to it do kind of force your hands into those analog positions as well. But of course, you do have that retro style D-pad as well. Okay, let's do one more comparison of controllers here. Let's actually use the Xbox Series S one next. Like with the other controller, this one is very analog focused, but as you can see here, it has much chunkier triggers and shoulder buttons. On top of that, the face buttons on the Xbox controller are much more rounded. And I'd also say the ergonomics on this are more comfortable as well. They're more angled in, and so it just makes it kind of really easy to hold everything in your hands. 
By contrast, the 8-bit Do one is a little bit more squarish feeling. In fact, the center of it just kind of feels a little bit flat. In that regard, that setup makes it feel a little bit more like a Switch Pro controller. And so it's kind of a mixture between all of those. It is very analog focused, but it is easy to grab the D-pad when you need it. Okay, I think that's been enough comparisons. Let's actually test this out when it comes to games as well. Let's start with a couple analog control games, and as you can see here, it works out really well. I would say this is perfectly comfortable when it comes to first-person shooters like this. And here I'm actually streaming Halo Infinite using Xbox Game Streaming. I like the analog inputs on this, they feel nice and responsive. You're not getting a lot of resistance here, it just kind of goes down really easily. And I think that experience reminds me a lot of the PS4 controller as well. Now let's do a little bit of D-pad gaming just to get a feel for it. And yeah, it is a little bit odd to play it like this. The angle between the D-pad and the face buttons just isn't perfectly ideal. It's not bad, but it's just not the best. And so I think in that regard, it is serviceable for retro games, but it's not something I would really look forward to using. In fact, once I had the ability to actually play something that was a little bit more analog control friendly, something like A Link to the Past as you can see here, I actually went into RetroArch and swapped out the controls so that the analog stick mimicked the D-pad. And maybe it's a little bit blasphemy to play a Super Nintendo game with an analog stick like this, but I will say that I found this control scheme to be a lot more fitting for this game. And so I spent a lot of time playing this and testing out the buttons in particular, and yeah, the buttons felt great. I could press on these all day. But long story short, I preferred to use the analog stick over the D-pad if I did have a choice. And I think that does say something about this controller. Okay, let's take a second and talk about the 8-bit Do Ultimate software. This has been around for a while and works exactly the same as it does on this controller with others. Within here, you can set up up to three different profiles and then also map your buttons however you'd like. Within this menu here is where you would actually assign the buttons to your back pedals as well. And you can grab this app for free via the Microsoft Store on your PC or the Xbox Store. And in addition to mapping the buttons, you can also adjust the analog inputs. That includes the analog sticks as well as the analog triggers. Here, what you can do is turn down the threshold, so that way when you only press down halfway on something, it'll go 100%. And then also, you can adjust the force vibration. If you want to have the triggers only have a little bit of vibration compared to the rest of the paddles, that's all up to you. Either way, I've always found that the controllers work really well with this software, and this controller here is no exception. And so in wrapping up here, how do I feel about the ultimate wired controller from 8-Bit Do? Well, there are a lot of things I like about it. I like that it's kind of a halfway Xbox controller. I like the rib back to it. And the control scheme is very comfortable and it does a lot of things well. But I think if I was to play analog six style games, I would still prefer the Xbox controller over this one. A lot of that has to do with the sheer ergonomics of the Xbox controller. I think it's one of the best out there. And so in that regard, I would prefer the Xbox controller over this. And along those same lines, if I was to play some retro games on my Xbox, then I think between the two here, I would prefer to use the Pro 2 controller here on the left. This one is a much more D-pad centric controller. And honestly, the placement of the analog sticks is not bad either. If you're used to a PlayStation style setup, this is gonna be great for you too. And so I think I just kind of solved my own problem here. When it comes to analog based controls, I prefer to use the Xbox controller. And when it comes to retro games, I like the Pro 2 one instead. And so at the end of the day, I think this controller will be a good fit for people who want a little bit of both worlds and don't wanna have multiple controllers laying around. It does many things very well, but it doesn't do anything perfectly. So if you have the opportunity, you can use a regular Xbox controller or the Pro 2 one to kind of get a best of both worlds. Or if you're looking for just one, this one might be a good fit. But in all other cases, I think you should stick with the ones that work the best. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions in comments below. And be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming.